I thought I should tell you a little bit more about Wayne McAllister, who got me into a lot of this. Um, back in the early 90s, we were trying to save a uh, 1949 Bob's Big Boy restaurant here in Los Angeles that McAllister had designed. And somebody told us, well, you know, he's still around. He's still uh, in business, and you should go meet him. And so we did, and uh, recorded an oral history with them, with Peter Maruzzi and John English. And we uh, heard about all these other great things he had done, all the great uh, drive-in restaurants, all the great nightclubs and hotels, and that he had done a uh, uh, the, the first resort in Las Vegas, the El Rancho Vegas. And then he talked about a hotel that he did in, in Mexico, a hotel, a casino resort in Tijuana called the Agua Caliente Resort in 1928. And, you know, at the time I was not so impressed. I didn't really understand what it was or its importance in the history of, um, of leisure architecture, in the history of, of resorts and hotels. Um, but the more I uh, looked into it, I was totally blown away by it. And eventually, like, I, I wrote this book because what, a, what an amazing guy and what an amazing career. And he was um, really very little known. Um, and so... I thought I'd maybe walk you through a, a real brief look at his career and, and what was so exciting about this guy that had created this very um, sort of fundamental part of the Las Vegas story. Um, one of the things that he had was this great uh, hotel project. He had this dossier that laid out the idea for the El Rancho Vegas, um, and, but, but back um, many years before it was built. Um, and so that, to me, feels like kind of the Rosetta Stone of understanding the history of Las Vegas um, and the Strip. The first hotel resort project on the Strip would have been modeled after Agua Caliente, his project in Mexico, that he did with his wife Corinne when they were both in their 20s. Wayne and Corinne were born in San Diego and studied architecture together. She was the only woman in the class and he, um, they, they met and became friends and started working together and were married and got this crazy job to design a 600 acre casino resort over the border when gambling and, and drinking and, uh, resources were not legal in, in California, um, and so they designed this incredibly lavish hotel um, and casino uh, that had little bungalow rooms and had the most opulent sort of uh, gambling hall and casino and um, and it was just a super luxurious um, grand place that became a... Uh, Celebrity hotspot. There's Rita Hayworth dancing there in the in the, um, the early 30s. Um, there was even a Busby Berkeley movie made called In Caliente about the um, this place. So it was a big deal, and I had never heard of it, and I was floored by it. I ended up getting married there in the ruins of it, which are still there. Um, it's a beautiful place and an important part of understanding the history of um, where these things come from. Um Wayne and Corinne moved to Los Angeles and to the Biltmore Hotel where they redesigned the nightclub there. Uh, one of the investors in the Mexico project um, thought, you know, these guys are great and they're and they're young and they're free and they came come up to L.A. with them and start doing hotels and pools and expansions and clubs and um, ended up building a brewery uh, right after Prohibition was lifted. Then got into the drive-in restaurant business, designing, not running them, but designing um, restaurants uh, for the automobile. You know, car car, uh, car culture-oriented, circular buildings with tall towers that would pull people in, and they'd stop and get a hamburger or get a, get a piece of pie at one of these drive-in restaurants. And those were the predecessors, of course, to the modern fast food restaurants, but they were striking and spectacular um, compositions of their own. And, um, of course, when the goal is to um, 
attract the eye and you have a you know giant neon cartoon character on the side of the road people stop and pay attention um of course he did a lot more sophisticated things um than the big neon big boys uh and of course the design got very modern in the uh 1930s and 40s um and he left behind the kind of historical stuff that he had done at Caliente. Here he is when we knew him, trying to save the Bobs, which is still there and still running. And uh, even in the uh, COVID-19 era, still running and still selling hamburgers. He designed lots of great um, supper clubs and dinner houses in that period as well. Um, so building up the kind of the more of the, the luxury side of it and did these great you know plush steakhouses and um restaurants you know that were um you know not clubs but you know pretty pretty uh high class joints in in los angeles and eventually uh went back to las vegas uh in um you know there's a there's a story about the flamingo which you can read here but um went back to Las Vegas to do the, um, after the El Rancho, the Sands, you know, the, the great 1952 Sands, which you might know from this picture, <laughs> but, you know, it's a pretty key, important moment of development along the strip, um, and brought in artists like Tony Duquette to do this mural at the Sands, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and he was always doing that, bringing in um, fine artist Albert Stewart did this bucking bronco with a nuclear cloud at the Sands. Um, and these were people that he had worked with on some of those supper club restaurants. The Fremont. Look at this neon. The Fremont. Doesn't that drive you crazy? Um, and, you know, this. these are some of the only photos that actually Wayne had, and they're amazing photos. But he retired from architecture in 1956. He left California. He moved to Washington, D.C. and worked for, um, for the Marriott Corporation, you know, doing um, internal, you know, doing hotel, hotel stuff, but not on the order of which he had been doing previously. And um, retired from that and came back to L.A. and, like, got into a totally unrelated business. Um, so he didn't have any kind of an archive or collection, and I had to go out and rebuild all that um, to make the book. But um, I, I'm real proud of it, and he was an amazing guy. And, um, you know, the El Rancho Vegas really did invent the casino resort on the Las Vegas Strip um, in so many ways. Uh, but anyway, thanks for listening.